Marhaba, this is the Arab Gamer, Gaming from the Arab World. I'm really glad we're done covering those last two episodes. I felt they were a bit too serious and, well, I'm just glad that we're moving on to something a little more lighthearted. So, without further ado, here is... Marhaba, Habibi. Guess who's back? Baba? Who did you think I was? Saddam Hussein? So what are you doing this time, you lazy lizard? Um, nothing really, just working on a new episode about Arabs and video. Okay, so without further ado, here is episode 4, Arabs and Video Games. I touched briefly on this topic on one of my blogs. You do read my blogs, don't you? Just read them. You will learn that Arab video game characters aren't exactly treated properly. For example, the moment I mention the word terrorist, your mind ends up automatically picturing this guy. Because this is how terrorists are mostly presented in modern media. Yeah, I see how they do it on TV all the time. Unfortunately, it's not only in TVs, it's in video games as well. You see, we got famous for all the wrong reasons. Um, and honestly, after all these problems, we ended up getting categorized under two things. Pre-9-11 and post-9-11. Before 9-11, not a lot of people were sure what an Arab was. Most outsiders thought that we were a race of people who lived in the desert, take religion seriously, and were mostly ruled by some rich sultan. Oh, and let's not forget the pyramids. So we ended up taking the forms of peasants, extreme rulers, and people who lacked education and technology. Perfect example in movies are Indiana Jones, Rambo, and Aladdin. The same can be applied to video games with titles such as Desert Strike and Prince of Persia. Although he was actually Persian, which doesn't really make him an Arab. After 9-11, things began to change radically. No longer were we a faraway, ambiguous race. We finally gained the spotlight and the world's attention. And fortunately, it was a bad kind of attention. Gone are the peasants, and here comes the angry mob with the AK-47s. We now live in caves instead of just deserts, where we carry ammunition and plot world domination. With movies, we got everything from Chuck Norris, and documentaries, and military movies. With games, we became targets in most, if not all, modern shooters. Among them was Delta Force, which was infamous for making all the bad guys Arab. This is all without counting in the Iraq War, which brought in more controversial titles such as Command and Conquer Generals. Well, these guys don't know what they're talking about. That's true, but at the same time, it's not really their fault. So before jumping the gun and pointing fingers, let's just take a while to understand why this is really happening. I think the main reason why many writers, producers, and game developers opt for this, other than, you know, appealing to the mainstream media, is because this is what they know about us. We tend to be a secluded race who don't typically share their ideals and beliefs openly. And when we do, it mainly ends up attracting unwanted attention. For example, people around the world know more about Osama bin Laden than Ibn Battuta. Which is really sad because our history and culture is extremely rich. I mean, we were one of the first people in the world who standardized math. Math! I see! But what does this have to do with video games? Because video games aren't just for entertainment purposes. They can be used as a learning experience as well. And considering how this generation of people play video games more than read books, that's gotta mean something. Okay, so whenever I mention the word Japan, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Yup. Uh-huh. Yeah. You see, Japan did something really smart. Instead of just books, they decided to invest heavily in media such as video games and anime. They were able to apply a sort of cultural brainwashing, which can be loosely defined as cultural diffusion. Through this, they were able to educate a whole new internet generation about the cultures of Japan and why it's such a wonderful place. But doing this sort of thing isn't really easy, especially in video games. In order for the player to be really immersed, they would need to control a proper avatar who would fit the environment. I know one game that managed to pull it off quite well, Shenmue. While playing as Ryo Hazuki, I was able to learn a lot through him and not just about Japan's culture, but China as well. Best of all, they managed to do it without making it feel boring. And to me, this is one of the many beauties of the video game industry, which is to learn while having fun. So you see, in order to be immersed in the game world, you would need a proper avatar. Hmm. So are there any Arab avatars? Of course. Here are some examples. Beyond Oasis, or as it's known in Europe as the story of Thor, successor of the Light, let us take control of Prince Ali, who ventured the land of Oasis to stop an evil wizard. 
Along the way, you obtained various spirits, which is synonymous with the jinn. You even obtained a spirit called Defrit, which means devil in Arabic. Farid Malik from Dozak's Human Revolution was your personal pilot in the game. According to her profile, she's an Arab born in Dearborn, Michigan, which is a heavily Arab populated area in the US. Yusuf Amir from GTA perfectly portrayed your typical spoiled rich Arab. There was also that girl from Tekken, but nah, I don't buy it. While all these characters were great, we still needed one to look up to. After their success with Prince of Persia, Ubisoft wanted to create a game that centered on the history of assassins, which incidentally began in the Arab region. So in 2007, we finally got Assassin's Creed. It went on sale and introduced us to one of the most renowned video game characters of all time. Altair is the first playable Arab video game character that actually has depth. Gone is the stereotypical beard and angry looks. Instead, we have a reasonable, respectable man that human beings like us can relate to. I love every single detail about him. His honor to the code, his determination, the inner conflict he faces between right and wrong. I mean, even his last name, Ibn La Ahad, which translates to son of no one, just perfectly fits with his mysterious past. But the best part about him, the best part, has to be his appeal. People loved him. In fact, there are some gamers who loved Altair more than they loved Assassin's Creed. In the Arab region, Assassin's Creed was renowned for giving us a real, authentic Arabic setting. And up until now, many gamers in the region consider Assassin's Creed 1 the best in the series. Ah, oh, show me! <laughs> are you kidding me? He looks Chinese! What do you mean? Ha! Huh. I'll show you what a real Arab looks like. Ah! Oh my god, how is that physically possible? If it's one thing that Assassin's Creed showed us, it's that Arabs in video games can finally be taken seriously. But sadly, it's still not enough. Up until now, the terrorist stigma still tends to rear its ugly head every now and then. Games such as Heavy Fire for WiiWare have been criticized for being an Arab shooting gallery. And in retaliation, you see Arab game developers creating games that let you shoot American. Trust me, the last thing I want to see is for this medium to be turned into a political battleground. If games can help express and teach the world about Arab culture while making it fun, then what's the holdup? This is also not only exclusive to Arabs. I mean, we live in a world that is incredibly diverse with different stories to tell and knowledge to share. In order for this industry to grow, it would need to adapt and accept these cultures so that we can all relate to it. I probably wouldn't have been that interested in Japan if it wasn't for video games. And to any Arab game developers watching this, please, please make games that represent us properly and don't involve an AK-47. I know I would love to play a Sinbad game a la Wind Waker. This is the Arab Gamer Gaming from the Arab World, Yaziz. Marhaba gamers, I know I haven't been making these episodes fast enough, I'm really sorry, but I've actually been very busy starting up a new gaming community called Game Overviews, where I talk about the latest news, videos, and coverage. I will definitely pay attention to the site, especially with E3 around the corner. The other thing that uh, has been keeping me busy is my wedding prep. Weddings can be extremely stressful and incredibly time consuming, but alas comes the hard news. I will be going on my honeymoon leave soon, and which means I won't be able to make a new episode for a while. But don't worry, uh, I will not abandon this project, and I will definitely come back to my dedicated viewers. So make sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, where I will be doing some regular posts. But with that, take care, and I will see you soon. Ya Aziz.